And here we have a typical uh, scene of Baba washing the feet, in this case of lepers, but so often uh, he also washed the feet of the poor. And here's Baba getting prepared to have the lepers climb up on the little platform where he will wash their feet and bow down. The umbrella turns out to be quite a bit of a problem because Baba wanted to be sure that the pictures, the motion pictures being taken, turned out well. So the umbrella was bobbing back and forth part of the time to protect him because it was a hot day and part of the time uh, to be pushed out uh, to the side so Don could get a better picture of what was going on. And you notice the bandage around Baba's head, which Arish, in a fit of stubbornness and impatience with all the skin infections Baba would pick up, insisted that Baba put it around his forehead in the latter part of his life when he went through these actions with the poor and the lepers. He would give them a small token gift of money as well. It was a very precise operation Baba would carry out. The feet were to be in a certain particular place. I think this was partly to protect the amount of bending that he had to do because, of course, in this period he was already experiencing very serious pains in his neck due to the wearing of the vertebrae. Very often, of course, they would lack toes or even a large part of a foot. Some quite young, of course. It's sad to see them so incapacitated so early in their lives. The lineup ready to go. Baba very much wanted uh, that I take films of him on this occasion to show what the result was when he decided that it was um, not proper for the avatar to be seen as this cripple for the latter part of his life and decided to start walking. You will remember that in 58 when he was in America he was carried in a chair or in a wheelchair and then one day he decided to start walking and that was it. Even so much of the time when he walked, he would hold on to the arm or lean on someone. So here he is showing off the gardens. So he is showing all of us through Mayor's garden, which of course is one of the great joys of Baba's life. Mero was the gardener and Kaka was the person who did the hard work. And after Kaka left, I'm not sure who did it. But you see, even unaided and in unsteady ground, Baba could walk quite well by himself.
Of course, Seven Tiles is Baba's classic game in addition to playing and, excuse me, cheating at cards. So, of course, Baba's cheering everybody along. Baba throws the first ball. But cricket was Baba's favorite. Whenever there was a public gathering and there were great cricket matches going on, you would notice Pendu coming in and whispering things into Baba's ear. And he was telling him, listening on Brit on short wave, uh, what the latest score was. And Baba followed it right along. So Baba says, now it's just about time for everybody to start in. But Erich and one of the cook boys were really the best players. Erich for pitching and the cookie boy uh, for catching shots. And there's Don Stevens trying to throw. Bob always insisted Don get into one shot and Erich should be the cameraman. He even made me take off my hat. So there we've got it recorded. And even the native boys uh, from Pimplegon have to come over and watch what's going on. There's Pleader, a good hefty guy. And Padre, Lean and Lanky, Francis in the outfield, another of the cookie boys. He knocked it over. So Erich, Erich is not a very good shot, but a good pitcher. Now we've got it. Here's Dr. Deshmukh, our great, great artist. You see, he doesn't have much of a throw, and it goes pretty far astray. And Bob is there cheering him along. And it went rolling under the woodpile on that particular occasion. So Baba says, come along, get your arms in better shape now. Let's do it. Come on, Deshmukh. I missed again. Well, there we are. Baba had been five months in strict seclusion. And at the end of it, one of the things that went on was to uh, initiate... Uh, the new little center, Mare Baba Center, that the village of Erangon had put together. It was a beautiful occasion. So Baba's sitting under an awning, the little girl who's supposed to sing a solo, and suddenly she gets absolute stage fright. says, where is she? So the music starts. It's a great day in the life of Erangon Village. All of Baba's fingers were beating in time to the music. And I suppose beating quite a storm for humanity at the same time. And there's the little girl Baba's consoling her, wants her now to give her solo that she couldn't give a few moments ago. She sits down and comes out with her loving praise. And it was blazing hot, just look at all the energy that they're pouring out. Yogi-chi in his saffron uh, robes just next to Baba. I'm not sure we could put them on stage at the Olympia, but they're not bad at all. See, this village 
half of the houses half ruined or totally ruined, terribly poor, but such a tremendous, tremendous love. And here's this old lady who is laying down a little pattern in white flower for Baba's feet to follow. I don't know quite what the particular formula was, but her pattern led right to the front doorstep of a little tiny hovel where Baba goes in. And I was told that this was one of the old original serving people uh, at Maribond, who had worked for Baba and the Mondley for many, many years. So Baba went inside and stayed quietly with her for some minutes and then came back out again. And here we are at Marizad, Baba walking in Mara's garden. Baba always wanted to be sure that I took back various different films showing the relative ease with which he was walking. But of course, by this time, it was the neck that was beginning to give him his real trouble, his real pain. Twelve coats Baba always called a beginner must. He wore twelve coats and maybe one pair of trousers or shorts, uh, but uh, they're not too evident. But always these old ragged twelve coats, summer and winter. And he would stop by every once in a while and give Baba a cheerful little dance. I, I don't think he could have gotten into the Ziegfeld Follies, so, uh, but nevertheless, Bob always loved to see him and smiled and clapped his hands, and they had a good time with each other. Bob is coming out of Mondeley Hall. Very often, he would hold Francis's arm to steady him a bit. And as I mentioned, this was in February and around the time of Baba's birthday, of course. So there was a lot of mail coming in wishing him a, him a happy birthday. He was in quite strict seclusion at this particular period, was about to break it. He very often liked to walk through Mare's garden, out a little side passage, and out through the front gate and to the sentry shack. And so that would be one of his favorite itineraries. They were not quite the strict seclusions. That's Monty's little dog, Peter. And I had my little dog, Lucky, also a Cocker Spaniel, almost the same age. So there was a great competition between Monty and Don by letter as to which Cocker Spaniel was most intelligent and endearing, of course. But he's worried because he knows he's being filmed and he wants them to be good films. And there's that dratted umbrella to keep uh, the sun off of his head and probably spoiling the films that are being taken. So there's quite a conversation going on as to which is the best tilt for the umbrella. That's Mayor G, who just turned it the right and cock of the bald side. Erish has a stack of uh, birthday letters under his arm to read to Baba at the appropriate time. So now Baba's sitting down by the old sprinkler, water sprinkler uh, truck in the armchair that Alobar was carrying out for him. And this is the sentry shack. I think it was Baidul who very frequently had the job of being the sentry there to keep people away, especially during seclusion time. And that is Baidul, just at the side of Baba. 
I had to sleep in the room next to Baidu once and he really snored. So Baba made him go to a different room the next night. So this is one of the birthday greeting letters you've seen. Now this is Kekobad, whom Baba asked to come over and to talk with him and explain to me that it's Kekobad who says that he sees Baba in everything, everywhere around him. Kekobad was the oldest of the Mondali at that time. Baba wants to get somebody else into the picture. He says, come along quickly, the camera's rolling, we don't want to waste film now. So this was Ram Dass, and Baba called him a little saint, and sort of in parentheses, because Baba said, you really don't know anything at all about spirituality. This, of course, is one of, I think, the great scene that we have of Baba in the impossible situation of the living room at Marizad, no light at all. The light meter wouldn't even budge. And I was sick at heart because Baba was luminous and so intensely preoccupied with what he was doing. It was a marvelous scene. But I knew there was absolutely no chance of any of it coming out. So now, he says, turn off the phonograph. It was a recording of one of um, um, uh, the uh, poems, uh, one of his favorites, set to music, and now Baba is describing uh, what the words mean. But I, although Irish was translating for me from Baba's gestures, I was so sick at heart, but I was, uh, I knew that humanity would miss and all the people would who loved Baba would never see, but Baba had other ideas of his own. It took Mara and Mani, they said, weeks before I arrived to get Baba's agreement to take up his drum again for the first time since he had been in his thirties to play it and to accompany this Hafiz recording. And I was so, so unhappy and Mani and Mare were so unhappy that they finally persuaded Baba uh, to um, uh, come outside and do a little bit uh, of playing on the drum outside where um, I could get, uh, of course, sufficient light to, to record. This is just a little interpolated scene, but then we will go back uh, to a bench set up outside of Mondeley Hall. Mayor G to Baba's right, and Francis to his left. And one of the cook boys is carrying a musical instrument that he's going to set down and play for Baba. And Baba always insisted that Erich take the camera for a few moments and photograph Don with Baba. 
And now the cook boy uh, does the concert for Baba. So here we are. Baba said, all right, if everybody's so unhappy, I go outside. I, I don't like it at all, but I'll do it. And so he started to tap on it, and then he said to Francis, uh, Francis, sing something for me and I'll accompany you. And so Francis, what does he do? He selects a hillbilly song, and uh, Francis's voice is nothing to brag about. I don't think he ever had one half minute of music instruction for singing. And Baba obviously was not enchanted by it, you know, he was just sort of tapping away haphazardly and I thought, oh my God, compared to yesterday in On the Couch, what a difference. And finally Baba's interest began to waver more and more and the tapping grew slower and slower and Francis realized that he was not doing a bang up job on his singing and finally Baba changed the subject entirely. So now he begins to ask Francis about uh, the book that Francis has just written, We the People Sing, and which was to be the first thing printed on paper coming from Mayor G's new paper plant. And so Baba wants to know how all of that's going on and uh, whether everything is finished and uh, what we're going to do with the copies and how they will go here and there. and how we'll get some of them to England and America rapidly, and then Baba has the bright idea, well, Don's on an airplane, and he can carry a hundred or two hundred copies with him, and he'll get there fast, and uh, that's a wonderful way to distribute the book, uh, just hot off the press. So he says, now, now what about payment for all of this? Uh, take a while to sell them and get the money back from way over there. And Baba had another bright idea. Well, we'll get Don to pay for them. Of course, as a businessman, I thought this was a lousy way of going about it. But, but you know, I was busy filming, and so I was not arguing. But Bob is very pleased with this whole business that he has dreamed up. You see, Baba keeps going over it. Yes, and planes go fast. Uh, we've got the finances all fixed out now. So this is the last afternoon and Baba was going to allow Joseph and Carrie Hart to come in. They were going to be leaving India soon to move back to the United States. Baba said, in your old age, you really shouldn't try living here any longer. Bob is still gesturing about his wonderful financial arrangement that he's just made for Don, you see. He's in great good spirits there. But he's got that pretty well polished off and sorted out now. And then he said, Don, take my arm and uh, walk with me. I was frightened to death because I was afraid I might just possibly stumble some way and Baba might fall and what would happen if he broke or sprained something else. I'd go down in history as a double Judas in that case, certainly. I was trying to smile, but I, I certainly didn't feel smiling inside of myself. But it was terrific to be able to have Baba. He said, Don, tell me a story. And all I could think of was the French dickery dickery doc, diggeray diggeray doge. Le rat monta l'horloge, une air frappe, le rat s'échappe, diggeray, diggeray, doge.